the UK, the government has dropped plans to reopen all English primary schools by July as the coronavirus lockdown has eased. The move has angered many parents, but the need to balance children's education with the need to avoid another surge of the virus is one being debated the world over. By the end of March, more than one and a half billion learners in 190 countries have been impacted by national school closures. Since then, some countries have started to gradually reopen schools with various safety measures in place. Those include extra hand washing facilities and availability of sanitizer. And in some countries, temperature checks and face masks have been made compulsory. Social distance, distancing in classrooms as well has been a key part of keeping pupils safe while at school. Well, Denmark was the first country in Europe to reopen its primary schools after containing the virus early on. Let's find out how schools and students have adapted and talk to Don Mayer, head of St Joseph's International School in Roskilde, Denmark. Really good to see you. How did it go when you reopened? What was the reaction from students and parents? Uh, well, initially, I guess in the community there was some anxiety before it opened, but then uh, we had uh, a really positive response. It was terrific to actually just see the children returning to school, happy parents, happy children. Um, and so the whole uh, process went uh, yeah, very well and better than we could have expected. And what sort of measures have you put in place, Dom? Yeah, well, we did reopen our schools, but it wasn't school as we usually know it. Um, so even before people could enter uh, the buildings, we uh, brought in additional uh, hand washing facilities out the front and at the back gate of the school. Parents weren't allowed uh, into the schools and uh, yeah, frequent hand washing, uh, we did initially have the two metre uh, social distancing rule, which meant we had to split classes uh, and have them in two different rooms. Um, and then as the following the general health guidelines of uh, sneezing into your sleeve and, um, and so forth. And did kids adapt well to that or was it a challenge? Uh, they did. Um, they were very good when they uh, all came back. Uh, they were so glad to be back that uh, this new set of rules, I guess, that was uh, put upon them and new routines, uh, they welcomed them openly. Um, if you ask someone when they came back, though, of course, they were happy to see their friends again. That was their main thing. Uh, but they would also comment that, gee, there was a lot of time spent washing hands. Yeah. And did you have great attendance straight away or did it take a while for some of that confidence to build up again and the anxiety to wane? Uh, well, uh, we opened on, um, when the schools reopened on uh, the 15th of April, that was a Wednesday, so those first few days attendance was lower. I think there was a, a number of people that were just waiting and to see what would happen. Um, uh, at our school, St Joseph's, we managed to, uh, by the second week, I'd say our attendances were back to within a normal rate. And right across the country in Denmark, in that second week after reopening, school attendances was back to 90%. So, Dom, here's the big question, what parents around the world are going to want to know. What's happened? Has there been a spike in infections in your school or across Denmark? Uh, no. Uh, there was a report released yesterday by the uh, Danish health authorities and they had stated that uh, infection rates are still very low uh, and that there was no indication that reopening schools uh, had any effect on, um, on the rates here in Denmark, uh, even though we are actually uh, doing more tests now than we were. So there's lots of uh, trace and test, is there? Uh, no, it's just, um, oh, it's uh, voluntary testing. Uh, so they're doing more um, tests per day than they were, uh, you know, even a few months ago. Uh, and the infection rates are still, uh, still low. Even uh, those initial primary school children that returned, that's two months ago. So, uh, and at our school, we have not had any cases or anything for alarm during that time either. In some countries there's been a lot of criticism of the government and the mixed messages that schools, parents, students have been getting. What's the messaging been like in Denmark? Uh, well, of course, I think everyone's context and situation is different. Uh, here in Denmark there is a, uh, a large trust uh, in the society, so that means that there's a trust with each other, uh, that uh, everyone will comply to the rules. And there has also been a, a large trust in the government. So. If they have come out with information, uh, people were very compliant very quickly. Uh, people were happy to follow the rules. Dom, I wonder what you think the collateral damage is to kids, keeping them off school for long periods of time? Uh, well, that was my concern, uh, is what that would be, it's particularly uh, those primary age children. The younger they are, the more... Um, school isn't just about the ABCs. They get a lot more out of school through social interaction. Um, yeah, about building friendships and uh, conflict, resolving conflicts and just that social interaction 
is hugely important. So I was really happy when they announced that the schools would be reopening because I think that part of their social emotional development uh, it was very uh, was most important, and that had to be the first group to get back after reopening. Really interesting perspective. It's good to hear from you, Dom. Thanks for joining us, Dom Mayer, joining us there from Denmark.